John here. Here's lick of the day number 10. This one is in D minor and we're mainly using alternate picking. We have some hybrid picking at the end, but we'll get to that later. As usual, you can find the tab in the description and it will also pop up here on the screen. So I'm going to start by playing this slowly and we start here on the 18th fret of the high E string. So, it's in D minor, D Aeolian, and we start with this Ingve sequence. Uh, I think I can call it that because that's where I learned it, uh, even though I heard a lot of people after Ingve play it as well. Uh, if we number the notes from left to right, one, two, three, and the actual frets here would be uh, 15, 17, 18, the sequence would go three, one, two, three, two, one. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, you've probably seen it at some point, because I, I like this one a lot. And we basically repeat that on every string, following the two different uh, three note per string shapes. And the first three note per string shape goes like this, it's exactly like a F major shape. So you see every string pair has the same fingering, so it makes it pretty easy to remember. So we have um, uh, 18, 17, 15 on the E and B. And then on the G and D we have 17, 15, 14. And finally on the A and E we have 17, 15, 13. And like I said, we apply this sequence on all strings. Starting with a downstroke, ultimate picking. Uh, I do that down to the D string, then I restart it again on the G string in the next position down. And that position looks like this. So, um, let's see, we have 17, 15, 13 on the E and B. Then on the G and D we have 15, 14, 12. And on the A and E we have 15, 13, 12. And then we'll land here on the root note. Uh, and if you paid attention, you might have seen that it's exactly the same notes that we're playing from here. It's just starting one octave lower. And that's a thing that I like to do with fast runs. Not always, but uh, it works well a lot of the time. It's kind of like uh, uh, if you look at good piano music, like virtuosic uh, piano pieces, usually when there's a run, it will be repeated uh, one octave lower and maybe even one octave lower after that. And the reasoning for that compositionally is that since there's so many notes, it can sound quite confusing to the ear. But if it gets repeated with exactly the same notes, just one octave or one octave, one octave lower or one octave higher, it's easier for the listener to sort of take it in. So that's a, a thing that you can try with your own licks. So if you come up with a cool sequence, try playing it one octave lower or one octave higher, depending on the range you're starting at. Anyway, saying that, we, I'm going to play the end from the beginning. And like I said, you repeat the same thing from here. Only difference is, is that the shape is even easier because you don't need to compensate for the B string. Here we need to move down a half step between the two between the two string shapes. Here we can just stay in the same position. The notes are the same though. Now once we get to this note, the root note, we're gonna go up in this intervallic pattern. And this is very much uh, Petrucci inspired. Uh, he would alternate pick it, I use hybrid picking. You can do whatever you feel works the best for you. But the pattern goes like this. Basically a lot of octaves and fifths. Uh, we have one fourth as well, but that's just to, to slide up to the fifth. So we got uh, 10, 12, and I use hybrid picking with the M finger here. So basically all the higher octave notes will be will be the, the hybrid picking. So every other note basically. So we got 10, and then 12, and move up to 12 on the A string. Play the octave there on the 14th fret of the G string, and then we repeat that again, compensated for the B string, otherwise we'll get, don't want that. 
And then instead of going straight here, uh, we start on the 12th fret and slide up. And in the video, I believe I did this. So I actually picked this one as well, but it's fairly easy because you have uh, an extra note in between here. So I can do the downstroke, slide, and have a lot of time to get to the high E string here. So if we put that together, don't do that. So it's a nice intervallic sound to it. Um, all right. When it comes to practicing this stuff, I highly suggest that you get very comfortable with this sequence first, maybe even just on a single string, if you're not used to it. Um, and one way of practicing that would be to take all four uh, three note per string fingerings or three finger fingerings, meaning one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four, and work on the sequence on a single string. Uh, you can either do all of them in a one position and move on. That's a, actually a great way of practicing because it sort of keeps your mind occupied. Uh, or you can just take one shape, move it up all, all the way up the string and back, change to the next one, do the same. So you do that four times on each string. It takes quite a while, but that's a good thing because you want a lot of good reps. Uh, but if you would do it uh, the way that I proposed first, where you shift the fingerings, Probably one of my favorite ways of practicing when I when I need to do repetitive practice because, like I said, I need to keep focused. Even though it's not a lot of um, variation, it's still enough so I can't just sit there and daydream, right? So if we try that from uh, let's say the tenth fret, and we have one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four, I would do two reps of each. So I would go one, two, three first and do play the sequence. So do that twice, change to one, two, four, one, three, four, and two, three, four. At this point, you can move up a fret. Move up a fret again. Or you can simply do this in one single position and do it in all strings instead. So then I would start on the low E string and just go. Keep it at a tempo where everything is perfect though. And so on. And if you want to cover the entire fretboard, you can do it on every fret. That's a great workout. And if you're even more serious, you when you get up here and you've done all the frets, you do it all again, starting with an upstroke. Now that would be quite a workout. Uh, but I think it's good to do that type of stuff uh, from time to time as well. If you simply want to make sure you cover the whole fretboard in different tensions and basically getting used to all the uh, the spacings of the fretboard. One thing that I like to do for this type of stuff is to cover it by going fr from fret one to four. So I do all the combinations here. And then I do it from the fifth fret. So I'm basically going one, two, three, four, starting on the fifth fret, do the same thing, starting on the ninth fret, 13th fret, 17th fret. And if you're really masochistic, you do the 21st fret as well. Uh, I actually suggest you do that if you have a 24 fret guitar. It's gonna be super annoying. And you might have to go half speed here. So if you're comfortable with like here, you might have to go and so on up here, but it's still worth doing because it's gonna come a day uh, when you least uh, expect it, where you have to play something up here because it's part of a solo you have to cover, or it's this part of the run that you came up with and you really want to play it. And if you've never practiced up here, it's gonna be extremely annoying to try to get over that hump when you actually need it. So if you make it a habit of always practicing the entire fretboard, you won't have that problem. Uh, this will probably always feel less comfortable than being here though, but that's just the nature of the instrument. Another thing you can try, which is also really good for your scale knowledge and visualization, is to 
d play the sequence on each string first. So you go. Now I'm going to keep B minor. You do that all the way up, all the way back, every string. And then you can do, uh, you can try doing all six strings uh, on each shape. So you would go. And so on, all the way up, all the way back. Uh, or you can do two strings at a time. So maybe you go like this. So there's different ways of working on it. And the idea is just to find uh, a way that you haven't done before and that you feel not so comfortable with. Just make sure that you focus on getting all the good reps in. So keep the tempo low. And it's all about building that solid foundation for your uh, picking technique. And then once you've done that, then you can try different strategies for getting the speed up, like speed bursts and rhythmic variations and all kinds of stuff that I've already talked about here on the channel. But I'm going to talk about it again uh, eventually because I think it's very important. But the most important thing for your overall technique, in my opinion, is to get a lot of slow work in where no mistakes allowed basically. So really build that foundation and you'll find that your overall technique will be way more solid and whenever you try to go faster it's going to work out way better for you. So that's all for this one. If you have any questions just post them below. Otherwise have fun with this one and see you in the next one.